enjoy watching machinery work, then prepare to be impressed because this blew my mind. I did not think it was gonna work as well as it did. We have a Wessex flail mower today. It's a pull behind self-powered flail mower that we're gonna be putting through the paces. Decided to go for it. We found a, just a nasty application and it's an area of our property that is very wet. It'll dry out, but not like bone dry. It's always a bit squishy and a bit damp and driving a tractor in this area is always a big question mark. But even today with the ATV, it was still a question mark. I did not know if it was gonna get stuck in there, if it was gonna just sit there and spin its wheels and we were gonna have a big problem on our hands. It's not the first time we've stuck equipment out of this property, especially on the western half that is very low lying. A lot of grass though, this is a good uh, area that there's a lot of deer activity, a lot of wildlife activity and an area that we enjoy. And it's almost unusable unless you do some mowing in it and put some paths in it and things like that. So we're gonna see what happens. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So the main area that we're mowing was a food plot last year had a lot of clover in it and some brassicas and a um, little bit of winter wheat and you can see this year it's completely grown up it looks just like it did last summer and the summer before that too it's a great little spot a little honey hole as you might call it and now I'm a little over six foot and there's sections of this grass that are taller than I am when I'm walking through it and so this is it's very tall it's very dense there's just a lot of a lot of matter that's there and it's also damp okay and so it's just a really it's it's harsh conditions you know whether it was on a tractor or a skid steer or anything else this is just a lot of material that you're trying to chop up and flail mowers don't generally cut all that high and so that kind of compounds it as well because you're chopping it down low where it's the densest and then it's just that much more material that you're trying to mulch up disperse and not bog the machine down now as we're going on this first pass that was the the real question mark in my mind because i wanted to see if the the Can-Am was gonna sink down into the, the mud and the muck, and it didn't. It was holding steady right on top of the surface, and so that kind of alleviated the concern there. But the next step was, was the mower gonna actually perform in this type of a condition? We get around one of the first passes, and we actually bog the machine down. It was one of those scenarios where there was just too much material. I couldn't hear very well because I had the hearing protection on, and so I wasn't able to hear the engine over the, uh, well, the flail mower engine, not the Can-Am engine, but the flail mower engine was bogging down and it stalled out. No big deal though, we got it fired back up. We did stall it out one more time in that same exact spot. It must have just been the, the right combination of speed and material just working against us, but that was it. And now maintaining a constant speed with an ATV is not as easy as it is with a tractor or a skid steer. You know, you had the hand throttle and you're just kind of trying to keep it steady but as you're bouncing along and moving along it's just really hard to do so there's a bit of revving up and revving down and jumping for a little bit and then slowing back down and so it's it's a little bit of a different experience as far as that goes if i had my ranger with a foot pedal then it would again be a little bit more controllable so the rest of the time was smooth sailing though very easy to use you know backing it up is kind of like backing up a trailer if you know how to back up a trailer, you can back up a flail mower. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing that. The other, the other feature you wanna be aware of is how wide the machine is. You can of course rotate those wheels to be directly behind the unit, but you're changing the dynamic of the load. So you're putting a lot more weight onto the back of the ATV. Uh, when those wheels are out on the side of the mower, it really spreads the weight out, takes the tongue weight off of the ATV, and puts it on those big fat flotation tires. And so it does a better job dispersing the weight. The only challenge is then trying to get through tighter spaces because those, those tires add probably two and a half foot overall to the width of the machine that's not being mowed. The finished results I think were incredible. You really couldn't ask for much more. This was one pass that we, that we did on here. Oftentimes with a brush hog, 
you're gonna go multiple passes in material like this. You're not gonna get as clean of a cut. You'll have a lot bigger windrows and piles of material where this is all much more finely chopped up and evenly dispersed. So that really helps as well and makes a big difference. One of the great things about a pull behind flail mower is the fact that, well, we did a survey last year at some point and essentially half of the respondents own both a tractor and an ATV or UTV. So if you can get a piece of equipment that can work on both types of machines, say one is down or one's in for repairs or whatever the issue is, then you still have a piece of equipment that can work on the other machine and get your jobs done. This model here does have an electric start if you wanna hook that up. We're probably not gonna keep it on this machine specifically. So we didn't hook that up, we just did the recoil start, which was easy enough as you can see. I'd like to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. I mean, super awesome. We put it in the harshest conditions we could find and it excelled. I'd be confident using it anywhere on our property based on this experience. And of course, we didn't even use the swing feature on there. We didn't use the swing lock tires on there. There's other conditions that we can put this in as well to try it out and test it out, but that's just more versatility and flexibility. On top of that, it's super easy. You just hook it up to your, the ball in the back of your tractor or on your ATV or UTV, it surpassed every expectation that I had and then some. This performs just as well, maybe even better than a, a three-point PTO driven flail mower. I think a skid steer could match it on this capability, but that's about it. So folks, curious to see what you think about these flail mowers. If you wanna get more of an in-depth overview, we did that video just before this one. So go check that out as well. You can get all the information, get all the history of the company, the features, the the design, the manufacturing, everything that you want to know can be answered in that video there. And if you want to order one of these, you can go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship these nationwide. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.